Welcome back to Ratchet Season. Today it's time to delve into Going Commando and figure out why it's one of the best sequels ever and worthy of a 9 out of 10. Yes, I know. It's been a while since I reviewed the first game and I do apologize for that. Oh, you'll have to forgive J2 for being on the other side of the room. You see, he recently tested positive for what is referred to in his home galaxy as the Blue Milk Virus, so he's over there. Anyway, cue that sexy intro! Alright, let's get back into this epic world. Ratchet & Clank Going Commando was released for the PlayStation 2 in 2003, one year after the Lombax's inception. In most European territories, including Australia, it's actually called Locked and Loaded, most likely due to Going Commando being a sexual innuendo. This'll be a recurring theme. I mean, it could be worse. You could live somewhere where it's just called Ratchet & Clank 2. The story begins with Ratchet and Clank being interviewed by someone, and... Well, as you can imagine, we've been pretty busy. After Drek's defeat, there were parades, press conferences, fancy dress balls... Oh. Um... Ratchet? His balls dropped pretty damn quick, didn't they? Yeah, because Ratchet was super cocky in the first game, most people found it hard to like him, and I can definitely attest to that. You guys know how I felt about Spyro in his first game. So, as a result of the slight personality change, gone is Mikey Kelly. Instead, Ratchet is now, and to this day, being voiced by James Arnold Taylor, who, in my opinion, is much better. Anyway, the duo are then teleported to the Bogon Galaxy by the CEO of Megacorp, Abercrombie Fizzwidget. He informs us about the Protopet experiment, which was stolen by a mysterious figure. And so, Ratchet sets off to the planet Tyrannos to retrieve the experiment. Whoa! Oh my god! The Bogon Galaxy is so much more detailed than Solana. Yeah, you gotta admit, this is a pretty big leap in quality. Anyway, on to the actual gameplay. Clank is chilling on Megapolis, so Ratchet is going solo for the first couple planets. And the controls, believe it or not, are just as tight as the first game, if not a little tighter. This game basically answered every problem I had with the first game in terms of gameplay. This game was given so many quality of life changes, all of which I'm absolutely thrilled to see. Holding down a button to strafe? You can do that now. Walking around during a comet strike? You can do that now. Pausing the game while navigating your quick select? You can do that now. All of this, and more. Your weapons and nanotech can now be upgraded by killing enemies and earning EXP, which is definitely needed because the enemies get tougher and tougher every planet you travel to. Now, how exactly do you counteract this? After all, you won't have enough nanotech to survive most of these planets. Well, Insomniac thought of that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first game in the series in which you can purchase new armor for Ratchet. Yes, in addition to weapon vendors, Megacorp also has armor vendors where you can upgrade Ratchet's armor and increase protection from enemy attacks. This is awesome, and I love all the different suits you can purchase, but goddamn are they expensive. Well, it's a good thing you can collect way more bolts in this game. Now, let's talk about all the different elements that this game has to offer. First, there's the space missions. Honestly, I used to despise these, but now, I actually don't mind them. You can boost, shoot enemies, and barrel roll. It's very reminiscent of Star Fox 64. You can also take your ship to Slim Cognitos, where you can purchase upgrades and paint jobs for your ship with rare titanium. Slim also allows you to use your platinum bolts you collected to purchase cool mods for your weapons. Yep, the gold bolts return as well, except now they're platinum for some reason. Sadly, we only have three clank sections in this game. It's a shame too, because it's a neat mechanic that I liked in the first game. Oh well. 
There's the hover bike races, which are basically the hoverboard races, but on crack. Seriously, I love these. There are combat arenas where you can win a shit ton of bolts, and giant clank returns with two boss fights. Gadgets also make their return. We have the infiltrator and the electrolyzer, which are basically two trespassers, as well as the dynamo, which allows you to summon platforms. The swing shot also makes its return. After winning the Jabba the Hutt hoverbike race, you get the charge boots, the single best pair of boots you can get, and I'll explain why later. Speaking of boots, you can also find gravity boots, which are different from the magna boots. See, in the first game, the magna boots locked you on the magnet you were walking on, you walked slowly, you couldn't jump, and you couldn't use any of your weapons. You could only move forward and swing your wrench, which in going commando can also be upgraded by the way. Now walking on these platforms with the gravity boots is a lot smoother. You don't lose any momentum, you can jump, and you can use your weapons. The best way I can describe this game is everything great about the first game, but greater. Anyway, Ratchet and Clank then return the protopet to Fizzwidget, and the mysterious figure is revealed to be a female Lombax named Angela Cross, who is voiced by Kath Soshi. That name may sound familiar. Dexter's mom, the DeVille twins from Rugrats, Lola Bunny, Sally Acorn, you get it. She then informs us on what's going on here. Turns out the protopets are dangerous and cannot be released to the public. Things get more complicated thanks to a group known as Thugs for Less, who are led by... <laughs> you know what? He's never mentioned by name at all in this game, so instead I'm just gonna call him whatever name my Google Home gives me. This segment was supposed to have me asking my Google Home to come up with a boy name, but none of the videos that I recorded on my phone are fucking working anymore. So, unfortunately, this is all you get. But his name ended up being Charles, so his name is Charles. So we kill Charles and rescue Angela. Then we travel to the planet Yedel, the location of the Megacorp headquarters. Once we make our way inside, Fizzwidget reveals himself to be Captain Quark. Yep, he's back. And he captures our heroes and attempts to take the credit for restoring the protopets using Angela's helixomorph. But he only made it worse, as the original experiment then grew in size and ate Quark. So we confront the giant protopet in a boss fight that is much easier than Drek. We take the thing down, Angela fixes the helixomorph, the protopet is restored, and Clank now wants to bang the female infobot he met a while back. The credits roll and we get one final cutscene where Megacorp is testing the crotchetizer on Quark. And it's just as thrilling as it sounds. And just like the first game, we have challenge mode. Enemies are tougher, you keep every weapon, armor, and nanotech upgrade, and now you can collect even more bolts with a multiplier that increases the more enemies you kill without taking a hit. The multiplier goes up to 20, and you can earn so many bolts now. Getting a million bolts to buy the Rhino 2 isn't all that bad now. You can also get some weapons from the first game. You can get the Bomb Glove, the Decoy Glove, the Visibomb Gun, the Tesla Claw, and the Walloper. And best of all, if you have a save file of Ratchet 1 and you already bought these weapons in that game, you can get them for free. Seriously, this game is incredible. And everything in this game is incredibly paced. Nothing outstays its welcome. Okay, only one thing. That would be the last boss fight against Charles on the planet Snivelak. I personally can't fight this boss casually anymore. What I instead do is what is known as a speedrun strat. Using the decoy glove, I line myself up against these two gates and fire a decoy at just the right angle so that I can clip through. Then I move forward a bit so the model can load in, pull out the sheepinator, hold circle for about 20 seconds, kill the sheep with my wrench, trigger the cutscene, and watch the boss die instantly. I just saved you all 30 minutes of your time. You're welcome. There's so much here, I haven't even touched on the soundtrack yet. My god, is it awesome. Every planet has its own song, and hell, Aranos has a second piece of music when you revisit it. I love the music that plays during the hover bike races. It's the perfect beat you need to get your adrenaline going. Then there's the planets Tabora and Grelbin, known for their crystal and moonstone deserts. This is where the charge boots come in real handy. It's so satisfying finding every single one and collecting that skill point. Returning the crystals and moonstones to this baked motherfucker gives you bolts for all your hard work. Now, I do love this as a concept, but the Yetis on Grelbin can fuck off. Ah, yes. Thank you for reminding me, J2. Yes, like my faithful companion droid mentioned, 
you can use a teleporter on the planet Balden to travel to the Insomniac Museum. But only when your PS2's internal clock hits 3 a.m. Who's gonna wait till then to do this? Oh boy, 3 a.m. The other way to get there is to use the shortcut, which is unlocked after you purchase, upgrade, and fully mod every weapon in the game. Oh, and that includes Mega Weapons, which can then be upgraded to Omega Weapons. Holy shit, this game has it all. Anyway, if you choose to wait, the teleporter will open, and you can then travel to the planet Burbank, which is totally what the Earth is called. And here you can look at concept art, character and NPC models, and even check out some cut content, complete with commentary from Insomniac themselves. This would have absolutely blown my mind as a kid. So, yeah. I think it's safe to say that this game has it all. This game is my favorite in the entire series, no question. Everything that made the first game so great was cranked up to 11 here. I appreciate and love all of the quality of life improvements made to all of the flaws in Ratchet 1. This is an absolute must-have for any video game enthusiast looking to expand their collection. Ratchet & Clank Going Commando gets... I mean, I already said it, it gets a 9. However, because of how incredible this game was, that means it's only going to go downhill from here. But the fall won't be too steep because the next game might be worth checking out as well. But we'll save that for the next episode of the marathon. For now, let's watch a movie. Uh oh.